My name is Sue Forrester. Um, I am a professional company director. Uh, that means that I'm chair and serve as a non-executive director on several boards and my portfolio includes eight boards, four of which are listed on the Australian Stock Exchange. I started life as a banking and finance lawyer and I did that for about 25 years. I then uh, finished my MBA and decided I wanted to go into management and after I was a CEO for several years I was offered some board roles. So there came a time with a tipping point as to whether I continued as a CEO or whether I became a professional board director and in 2010 I made the leap of faith and went professional uh, company director. Um, how did I make that transition? Well it was easy because I had been a CEO so I knew what it was like for management and as I was moving on to boards I was taking on some smaller boards so by the time I got there I knew what it was like to be on both sides of the table and had that empathy for how it all worked. Uh, my advice would probably go before they became directors and that is do your research before you accept a board position, do lots of due diligence and make sure you totally understand what you're getting yourself into. There's a lot of mystery about what goes on around the board table and a lot of people find themselves on a board and go, oh my goodness, what have I done? So do lots of research, speak to the chair, speak to all the other directors and make sure you are very comfortable about the obligation you're about to take on. I wish I had have had the courage to ask the um, difficult questions when I was doing my due diligence. So it's really easy when you're finding out about a company to do financial research or organisational research. What it's not easy to find out is, does the board operate well? Is it functional? Or is it dysfunctional? Does the chairman get on with the CEO? Are they a high performing team? And you won't find out that until you sit around the table and you observe a few board meetings. So. I've learnt the new question I have when I'm asked to go onto boards is, tell me the stuff you don't want to tell me. Tell me the stuff that sits behind the, the, you know, the standard information that's available to everybody. So ways that you can make onboarding more effective for company directors is treat them like a normal person as you would an employee coming onto your company. So invite them to uh, an employee uh, induction session. Uh, invite them to sit on, on some board meetings before they actually start becoming a director. Um, invite them to some of the social events that go on. So just expose them to lots of different touch points within the company rather than treating them like somebody who comes in once a month and reads papers and leaves the building. The way I stay informed is just I read a lot. I, my antenna are on all the time and I read everything from you know, the print media through to electronic media, through my board packs. Um, I have some good channels into corporate governance specialists and I'm just constantly on the lookout for new information around what's going on in both management and corporate governance land. So the way you can ensure that they have maximum impact is to treat them as an active member of the board and don't treat them just as somebody who delivers information one way. So uh, be open with them about the information that they're providing, be upfront about whether it's too much, too little, whether it's effective and again treat them like a functioning member of your board rather than just a member of management who happens to put together the board packs. What separates out the the uh, excellence from an average board for me is the quality of the chairmanship and I will always seek out, if I'm asked to go onto a board, the chair and I will work at are they a good leader, do they provide leadership to both the board and management, are they a good communicator, are they a good human being. That's really, really important for me. Uh, the next step is the MD and their management team, how effective are they, are they good communicators, do they work well together and if you've got those things working in harmony, for me that'll make the difference.